Hello, and welcome to another video. This one is going to be going over some of my code in my repo for my Computer Science 2 course that I took when I was in college. This is basically a next step of the Computer Science 1 course where we go over data structures and algorithm analysis, but this one places an emphasis on Java programming, specifically object-oriented Java. So we go over different kinds of algorithms like greedy algorithms and graph theory and stuff like that in this course. And I'll be going over some of our weeks of our recitation labs, where we had to basically write a program using a specific algorithm that we would learn in lecture of that week. So let's go ahead and go over this one. The first week was actually pure math, so we were solving run times with just math, so there was no coding involved. So the second one is the actual first program we wrote. And this program is basically we are given an input file in this format where each test case will have this many number of lines represented to it. And here's the test cases. This first number represents how many numbers are in the array. So here's the five numbers of the array. And then here's our target number. Basically we're just supposed to be writing an algorithm in O of n time to go through this array and see if any two distinct numbers add up exactly to this number. If it's achievable, we print it out. If it's not, then we don't. So let's go ahead and go over a little bit of the code. We're using the same exact input files that are given in the PDFs, just for sake of knowing what the correct answer is. So basically, we are going to be using an algorithm that takes advantage knowing that the arrays are sorted, and that's told in the PDF that these are going to be sorted. You see 3, 5, 6, 7, 9, 1, 3, 6. Those are in sorted order. And we're basically going to be starting at the left and rightmost sides of the array, so the low side and the high side, and if we add them together as we loop through it and the result is less than our target value, then we're going to increase the low one, meaning that the lowest value in the array obviously is not enough to equal the sum target. So we're going to increase that and see if the next highest number is. So for example, say we start here. 3 and 9 are added together, that's 12. That's not quite the target, so we're going to go ahead and increase this low one, because obviously this one needs to be higher. If it's not the case, if the high one, if it's if the sum is too high, then we're decrement the high value. So say that this three plus nine was over fourteen, we would decrement this value to go to the next one. To see if we can get closest to the target value. And if they're the same, then we would return true. And that's basically what it does. We can go ahead and run this as an application and see the target fourteen is achievable while the target 11 is not achievable. You can see right here, five plus nine does result in the target value of 14, so five and nine are our two distinct values. Whereas in here, an array of one, three, and six, you can't add them in any way to get 11 with just two values. The highest you can get is nine. And that's basically it for the first one. So here we go with the next weeks. This week's recitation was basically making a couple programs in Java about recursion. Uh, the first one is taking in an actual decimal integer, and we try and print out the number of ones in the binary representation of that. So the 63 would have six ones in the binary representation, and that's what we would be trying to find and print out. The second program is just finding the minimum value in an array. Very simple. Just go through, iterate through the array basically and compare um, your current minimum value to the next value that you're checking and update it as needed. And the third one is a grid search problem which is actually pretty fun. Where we're given uh, starting and ending coordinates as the two first pairs of numbers in the test file and then the rest would be the actual grid that you build up. Um, we were given two grids as samples. And we basically just try and find if it's true or false that we were able to get from the starting point to the ending point. Um, we can only move in the four directions, north, south, east, and west. Um, and we can only move with a space value of the current space we're on. So if we start here at one, we can only move one this way, one this way, one this way, or one this way. If we moved one this way, we can move two in this direction, two in this direction, two in this direction, or two in this direction, so on and so forth. 
And now we'll go through the code and we'll kind of see how it works. So here's the num ones. Um, basically, it's an O of log n times complexity because we're just dividing it by two. We're going through and we're having a base case. Um, if it's even, then we're going to divide by two and keep going. Um, but if it's odd, then we're actually going to add one, meaning that that'll have a one in the binary at that point and keep going. And here is the test file. We're going to be using the same input file as the PDF, 63, 64, 65, and 19. So we'll go ahead and run that. And we get six, one, two, three. So kind of remember these are the numbers we have. We'll go ahead and look at a decimal to binary converter. 63 does have six ones in it. 64 has one. You can see that's what we had right there. 65 should have two. And then the last one was 19. It has three ones in the binary value, and there we go. So that's the first one. Array min, uh, very simple, O of n. We basically have to iterate through the whole array, and we just compare our min value and update it if we find a value that's lower than the current min value. So you can go ahead and run that. Oops. There we go. We're in the right program. So we have one and two, if we look at our input values, here are the two arrays. One is definitely the lowest and two is definitely the lowest in this one. So let's go ahead and do grid search. <clears throat> so these are just using the two inputs that we have from the PDF to see if it's possible using a starting point of two, one and an ending point of zero, one, or a starting point of two, three, a zero, or ending point of zero, three using these grids, it's the same exact grid, can we find it by going through, and we basically use recursion for um, can we move through the board, and we just have a case that checks every direction, you're starting x, you're starting y minus 1, y plus 1, x minus 1, x plus 1, so each direction, and we find that the first one is true and the second one is false. So that's it for the third week, let's go ahead and move on to the fourth. Here's our fourth week, um, basically a little bit more recursion, but we're also doing some representations of 1D and 2D arrays in Java. Um, the basis of this program was to convert different types of arrays into others. Um, we have two different types. We'll have a conversion from a 2D array matrix, adjacency list matrix, to a 1D array list of numbers and then the opposite is the second one. You take the list of numbers and you convert that into an adjacency matrix like this filled with ones and zeros. And basically this is what the input file is looking for. You see that we have one that means we're turning a matrix into a list and this two means that the next program is running a list into a matrix. Four means that there's four lines and six means that there's going to be six lines here for the next matrix. And here, when we turn the, this, this row, we're basically doing it row by row. So you can see right here, we have a 0, 0, 1, 0, and it's going to be a zero indexed, like arrays are zero indexed. So this is spot 0, 1, 2, and 3 in this 1D array, basically the first row. And so when we, when we convert this right here, it says that we've got one, one value in this row and it's in a position two of that array. So for right here, we've got two one values in position two and three for the second row. So we've got position zero, one, two, and three. So we've got ones in the two and three position. So that's what this represents. Down here, we have three ones in the zero, one, and three position. So zero, one, three, et cetera, et cetera. For the opposite, it's the same thing. So we know that we've got two ones in the first row out of a six row matrix and they're in positions one and four. So here's it being in positions zero, one, two, three, four, five. So that's how we kind of build our 2D array from a 1D array list. Now let's look through the code. Um, as you've noticed, if you've been going through the Java files on my GitHub, um, in the very top of the file, I add my own test cases 
as well as the input test cases from the PDF. So if you want to try and based off of this, you can just add these to another, you know, your input file dot text. So feel free, and I, I usually include the outputs of what they would do as well. So for the conversion type of one, this is turning it from a matrix to a list. We basically fill in the matrix values to a 2D array. And then we go through and we check if it's equal to one, then we're gonna have that be in the list at whatever position it's for. And for type two, we basically fill in each, each 1D array. And based on those values there, we're going to fill out a 2D array, but we're just gonna print them out as 1D arrays. So we'll go ahead and run this real quick. So this is the, the input, we turned this 1D array right here at four by four into these lists with those one positions being right here. And then we turn this list, six lines of a list into a six by six adjacency matrix. And that's it for that week.